ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंदनाशलाखाय चक्षुरु मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाति वंदेह श्री गुरुन् श्रीयुत पदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जाता सहगण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सार्वदूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखा विता नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिने हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतृभ्य कृपा सिंधु नतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू डॉट डिवोटीज फॉर योर एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन इन दी क्लास we just move on to our uh, shloka today is the 11th mantra that we are going to take so yes mantra ji this 11th mantra is a little longer mantra it has almost 14 paras so i guess so we'll just try to see how much we can complete uh, today and move on to the 12th mantra so you all can unmute yourselves and repeat after me vidyam cha vidyam cha yas मृत्यु विद्या आमृत अश्नुते so one only one who can learn the process of ni science and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full bliss of immortality so let's read the first purport uh juhi mata ji please read the first purport hari krishna mata ji dharma pram since the creation of the material world everyone has been trying to attain a permanent life but the laws of nature are so cruel that no one has been able to avoid the hand of death no one wants to die nor does anyone want to become old or diseased the law of nature however does not allow any one immunity from old age disease or death nor has the advancement of material knowledge solved these problems material science can discover the nuclear bomb to accelerate the process of death but it cannot discover anything that can protect man from the cruel hands of old age disease and death krishna yeah thank you mother ji thank you so much so i just like to share a brief uh, overview of this whole thing Uh, is everybody able to see the screen yeah so now if you see in para 1 nobody no one can be materially immortal immortal means live for living forever like you know so 
uh, and in para 6 immortality possible only by following uh, krishna's teachings and in para 6 and 7 how to become immortal you know leave this world the knowledge is in the textbook but god also comes and also sends these professors and the material world is actually pushing us to learn so, uh, so many times you know we have experienced uh, so much of calamities and that is why then somehow or the other when you are in distress you take up uh, you know seriously your uh, uh, spiritual life in para 8 to 10 the contents of the textbooks are summarized like enjoying material sense gratification keeps us in this mortal world and keeping a balance of spiritual and uh, material uh, you know how to keep a balance of material and spiritual activities and in para 11 to 13, it is telling that incorrect use of dharma. How to incorrectly you will use arth, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. And this artha, dharma and kama, moksha is outrightly rejected on the very onset of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and attain immorality through para dharma, that is no Krishna personally. And 14 para, then how to use this real dharma? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha for attaining immortality. So this is what we will be seeing in all these 14 paragraphs. This is uh, uh, one long uh, purport to this particular mantra of Ishupanishad. There are many more like this coming up. But uh, so far from uh, mantra 1st to 10th, we did have very short paras like maybe 6 or 7. But uh, this is, uh, you know, one of the longest paragraphs that has come so far. So, uh, this particular, uh, in this particular mantra, uh, I'll just give a brief overview. Okay, So, what is the connection uh, between uh, the previous two mantras? We have explained that ignorance and false knowledge bind one and are in contrast to true knowledge. And now mantra 11 will describe that how one must know the relative positions of the material and spiritual knowledge to transcend the material energy and attain uh, immortality that is called deathlessness. So mantra 11, you know, is assuring us that if we cultivate our material knowledge alongside spiritual knowledge, then we can transcend this temporary world and attain our eternal position. So uh, material science and knowledge alone can never free us from birth, death, diseases or old age. And, uh, and that is why we must revive our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. Actually, the soul always exists eternally. But because of our material attachment, it binds us to this temporary uh, world. And that is why we keep on taking repeated births and deaths. So in this modern society, we seek only that knowledge which will increase our material desires and sense gratification. And this only delivers us into the cruel hands of death. But uh, when we learn to live in this material world, we must also seek knowledge of the soul and our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord or the eternal relationship with the Supreme Soul. So the goal of all knowledge is to engage even our material knowledge in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And by hearing about and glorifying the Lord, by remembering Him, by worshipping Him, uh, we can actually you know, attain this particular uh, goal. So... When I say that, uh, you know, transcending birth and death, transcending birth and death means actually uh, we are trying to attain a permanent life. So, okay, then what is the problem to attain that particular life? We'll be seeing that. Then what is the solution? So if we have a problem, then definitely, you know, the Shastras give us a solution to that particular problem. So uh, what is the solution to that problem? And okay, if, if the children are in a problem, then what is the father doing to solve that problem? So what is the Lord doing for us? And in return, what we have to do? What, uh, what you know, do's and don'ts. What we have to do and what we don't have to do. And 
uh, okay, if a solution is offered, then who is accepting that solution and who is not accepting that particular solution? That also we'll, uh, you know, we ha we'll have to figure out. So what is the problem? The problem is that uh, we don't want to, you know, die. We don't want to uh, grow old. We don't have any diseases. But, uh, you know, yet we cannot avoid these things. Nobody can avoid death and nobody can avoid diseases. Nobody can avoid old age. So then, uh, okay, this uh, particular problem is there. Uh, that nobody wants, uh, you know, to die. Nobody wants to grow old. Nobody wants to have diseases. But then, uh, please mute yourselves. So, who is imposing uh, these problems to us? So, the material nature is imposing these problems. And uh, it, uh, this material nature is not giving anyone that immunity. And... Uh, and but then how how is it aggravating that particular problem? So these problems are there. It's not like that. That okay, when we were born and you know we took up to spirituality, all the problems are finished. No, these material problems are keeping on aggregating, right? So if we see from the past, from you know many many births or many many lifetimes, what is happening? How is it aggregating? It is aggregating because. You know, there is advancement of material knowledge. The more the material knowledge is, then the more we get into sense gratification and we get into that loop. So uh, the best example of this, you know, uh, somebody is having many, uh, uh, many siddhis. Or like, for example, Hirana Kashipu. Hirana Kashipu was actually, uh, you know, he pleased Brahma. And then after gaining those boons, he became a very cunning person and because uh, he got those boons and you know he started putting atrocities on uh, different people uh, he was killed by nursing madev so even uh, when we do not make the right use of the you know boons given to us by the supreme lord then even we will be killed if we... so then uh, somebody might ask okay what is the solution for this so then uh, when we discuss that, okay, what is the Lord doing for us? Then the Lord is giving us scriptures. The Lord is reminding, uh, you know, the forget forgetful living entity that, okay, you know, you belong to the spiritual world and you you have to come over there. But then sometimes the Lord comes himself. Sometimes he sends his bona fide, uh, you know, representatives also. Then in this case, what do we have to do? Then uh, we don't have to have a... Uh, uh, we we have to even so we don't have to have one sided attempt that here the lord is giving us reminders through scriptures the lord is sending his bona fide you know representatives the lord himself is coming in the form of his grantha avatar in the form of his holy name then what we should do we should prepare to go back home back to godhead we should prepare ourselves to study the bhagavad gita bhagavatam so this will be one of the solutions. So now this solution, who will accept this solution? Only an intelligent being in human life will accept. Animals won't accept because animals, that intelligence is not, you know, fully, uh, uh, what do you say, mature. And who does not accept the solution? Then, you know, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says that, Namam Dushkrinata Mudha, Naradhama, lowest of the mankind, you know, these people will never, uh, you know, accept. So now the uh, role of, uh, uh, the role of uh, Vidya and Avidya. So what is Avidya? Avidya is like, you know, you're advancing in material knowledge for sense gratification. And the path is, it is leading you towards birth and death. And then who will take to this path of avidya? Only a foolish human being who is absorbed in, you know, uh, too much of uh, sense gratification and in this particular, you know, this cruel process that is there, he will take up to avidya. And uh, what will they pursue? They will only pursue, uh, you know, 
they will uh, pursue only you know the illusory energy and uh, they will repeatedly refuse to learn lessons even if they have got the worst of experiences they will not take lessons from those uh, you know calamities or miseries uh, they will uh, again and again keep on thinking okay they will just try to uh, you know convince themselves ki, okay aaj dukh hai to kal sukh aayega hi and then because of this the result will be that their material fever will keep on increasing from 102 to 103 to 104 and to 105 6 7 you know but then somebody might ask oh what you know some very compassionate vaishnava man okay what is the hope for them so the hope for them is that they have to you know uh, make the best use of the you know bad bargain that they have to trans they have to actually uh, you know transmigrate from that sense gratification to self realization so uh, we do not practice religion for you know economic development we do not uh, you know misuse the human intelligence that has been given to us for sense gratification and uh, then uh, definitely okay if a if the material fever is increasing then how to reduce that temperature then to reduce that temperature to you know a normal temperature of 96.6 then you need to have a balanced progress of spiritual and material knowledge and that's how you will be able to you know overcome a vidya okay now we have got vidya for example okay now he has realized and you know you know his temperature has come down to 98.6 and uh, he is balancing also so then uh, what is the role of vidya in this so uh, exactly now what is vidya so vidya is that particular uh, transcendental knowledge which is been given to us uh, we human beings to realize that uh, we we are not meant for sense gratification our real purpose is not sense enjoyment and our real purpose is to actually uh, you know worship the supreme personality of god it please the supreme personality so uh, real sense enjoyment is possible only when you know our present covering of this avidya is removed and we actually move towards vidya and how does vidya help us it is helping us to uh, free ourselves from uh, material contamination and it is helping us realize uh you know a real a real enjoyment the real enjoyment is that i will go and worship the supreme personality of god i'll go i'll surrender myself to the uh, supreme lord and this particular real vidya it is fulfilling uh this uh, you know it is actually helping us cure this material disease uh, the material disease that we have and uh, it is helping us regain our uh, you know health in terms of you know uh, uh, enjoying again but uh, this real time enjoyment so real enjoyment is in the spiritual world and not in the material world so then uh, when a person has got this particular knowledge he will realize that yes you know i am leading a healthy life and i am having a very sound mind and i don't have to work like an ass for sense gratification i have to study the scriptures i have to follow the principles given in the bhagavad gita i have to concentrate on my you know devotional life so then this vidya will actually be giving you all this you know realizations so this particular uh, you know if you see uh, para 1 onwards to at least para 5 onwards uh is primarily speaking about uh, no one can be materially immortal and the advancement of this material knowledge has not solved any problem of birth death old age and disease as i give you the example of uh, hiranyakashipu that though he was the most powerful of the materialist 
but he could not overcome his you know plans of becoming deathless or immortal whatever he he was doing he was not able to do but then uh, uh you know uh, those plans even our plans if you see you now we are planning something and you know something else is only happening our moment to moment plans are also being distorted we plan something and something else happens we anticipate something and something else happens so you know the uh, so this particular you know the, this paragraph from 1 to 5 is actually telling us that uh, uh, even uh, uh, ravana you know he tried to shoot but uh, uh, he also was not able to you know uh, overcome his deathlessness he was so much powerful at that particular point of time and uh, even he tried to accomplish but he was also not you know successful in that way uh, let's go to paragraph number 2 Yeah, Shant Devidasi, please read. Shanti Mataji. From the Puranas, we learn of the activities of Hiranakashipu, a king who was very much advanced materially, wanting to conquer cruel death by his material acquisitions and the strength of his knee signs. He underwent a type of meditation so severe that the inhabitants of all the planetary systems became disturbed by his mystic powers. He forced the creator of the universe, the demigod Brahma, to come down to him. He then asked Brahma for the benediction of becoming Amar, by which one does not die. Brahma said that he could not award the benediction because even he, the material creator who rules all the planets, is not Amar. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.17, Brahma lives a long time, but that does not mean he is immortal. Yeah. So now if you see in this, uh, that uh, as I already explained that even he was very material, uh, you know, advanced and uh, he wanted to actually conquer all, uh, you know, the he wanted to conquer even death so he actually meditated he meditated for 1000 years and uh, there hiranyakashipu is asking a boon from brahma that i should not be killed either in daytime or night time by any weapon or by any you know mortal being neither by a human nor by an animal and uh, he's thinking that i will be actually you know mortal but then he was also not able to overcome deathlessness. Yeah, Anshuman Prabhu, please read. Yes, Mataji. Hiranya, Hiranya means gold and Kasipu means soft bed. <clears throat> this cunning gentleman Hiranya Kasipu was interested in these two things, money and women. And he wanted to enjoy them by becoming immortal. He asked from Brahma many benedictions in hopes of indirectly fulfilling his desire to become immortal. Since mm -hmm. Brahma told him that he could not grant the gift of immortality, Hiranyakashipu requested that he not be killed by any man, animal, god or any other living being within the 84 lakh species. He also asked that he not die on land in the air or water or by any weapon. In this way, Hiranyakashipu foolishly thought these guarantees would save him from death. Ultimately, however, although Brahma granted him all these benedictions, he was killed by the personality of Godhead in the form of Narsimha, the Lord's half-lion, half-man incarnation. And no weapon was used to kill him, for he was killed by the Lord's nails. Nor was he killed on the land, in the air or in the water. For he was killed on the lap of what that of that wonderful living being, Narsima, who was beyond his conception. Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much. 
Hare so Krishna. I think uh, this particular paragraph is pretty much explanatory. Oh. Mohana, please read these two paragraphs. Mohana, are you there? Hare Krishna. Mohana, are you there? Uh, Nivedita Mataji, are you there? Please read. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. The whole point here is that even Hiranya Kashipu, the most uh, most materialist, could not become deathless by various plans. What then can be accomplished by the tiny Hiranya Kashipu, Kashipus of today, whose plans are thwarted from moment to moment? Sri Ishinabhashi instruct us not to make one-sided attempts to win the struggle for existence. Everyone is struggling hard for existence. But the laws of material nature are so hard and fast that they do not allow anyone to surpass them. In order to attain a permanent life, one must be prepared to go back to God. Yeah, thank you so much. So, you know, as I already explained that we should not make one-sided attempts. So, your you know, uh, if you see the materialist, what they're doing is they're making one-sided attempt. Means what? They're actually, you know, struggling hard for, you know, just, uh, you know, living that particular life only for the body. But a two-sided attempt is that, okay, you are, uh, you know, living to su sustain your body or maintain your body, but then you should live for even uh, maintaining your soul also. Why? Because the body is temporary and the soul is permanent. So, will you go after a temporary thing or a permanent thing? So, definitely we'll try to actually nurture or nourish the, you know, soul so that we can actually attain a per per permanent life. Otherwise, then you keep on going through this repeated birth and death and you will never be happy. So, if a person wants to become happy, then he has to make two-sided attempts. So, that is why, you know, in the beginning I said that, you know, material knowledge and spiritual knowledge both are required. But material knowledge is required so that you progress from material knowledge to spiritual knowledge, knowing your eternal constitutional position as the servant of the Lord. And when you surrender to the Lord, when you worship the Lord, then you will get permanent happiness. So, this is what is being said in this particular paragraph. Uh, let's go to this next paragraph. <clears throat> so, uh, in this particular... <clears throat> Atima Madhavi, please read this paragraph. The process by which one goes back to Godhead is a different branch of knowledge. And it has to be learned from revealed Vedic scriptures such as the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita and Shirimat Bhagavatam. To become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life after leaving this material body, one must study this sacred literature and obtain transcendental knowledge. The conditioned living being has forgotten his eternal relationship with God and has mistakenly accepted the temporary place of his birth as all in all. The Lord has kindly delivered the above-mentioned scriptures in India and other scriptures in other countries to remind the forgetful human being that his home is not here in this material world. The living being is a spiritual entity and he can be happy only by returning to his spiritual home. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so now in this particular paragraph, uh, what is being said is that... Uh, we need we we should endeavor to go back home back to godhead 
uh, and we should endeavor in those uh, in that particular direction also so many times people don't endeavor and uh, to become immortal and how to leave this world this knowledge is there in you know the bhagavad gita so god the lord is also coming the lord is sending his representatives also he's sending his professors also and the material world is actually pushing us to learn so to become happy uh, and to be, uh, to attain a permanent blissful life after leaving this material body one must study this uh, sacred literature and attain this particular uh, transcendental knowledge and for uh, you know for this the lord is sending his servants to propagate this message he sent so many of his messengers okay by which everybody can come back home back to god and sometimes the lord also has to come to do this work personally like in every millennium the lord comes whenever there is a lot of chaos and uh, you know nobody can solve that then the lord comes uh, of course uh, you know yesterday night we were reading that uh, <clears throat> the lord primarily does not come to kill the miscreants that he can do sitting in his own abode also but to please the devotees he comes himself and when he is coming to please the devotees then you know as a by product or by default he is uh, you know coming to uh, propagate also this message like when the lord came in dwapar yuga he propagated the message of the bhagavad gita he gave the message of the bhagavad gita personally he gave that message so there is no difference between the lord and his words his words are as equivalent as the lord there is no difference between the holy name and the lord the holy name and the lord are non different mm. so the miseries of these material world you know uh, are there to serve uh, to indirectly remind us of our uh, incompatibility with dead matter we are not compatible with the dead matter so for example if you are not compatible with somebody what do you do you distance yourself with that particular person right or uh, uh, you say that okay you know i am not compatible but okay somehow other we will manage living right so uh, those who are intelligent they will generally take note of these uh, you know reminders that are been given by the material nature again and again and they will engage themselves to cultivate vidya or transcendental knowledge so uh, you know uh, and you know when when you realize that okay uh, that you know i am in a vidya or i do not have this transcendental knowledge i have this material knowledge then uh, <clears throat> the first aspect is to learn you know ni science ni science means okay material knowledge how the material knowledge is only meant for sense gratification how it is very cruel and this you know uh, last shloka of uh, in the uh, you know chatur shloki of the bhagavatam they say that you should inquire about the absolute truth both directly also and indirectly also. directly means what directly means krishna is the supreme person of god it and only this will make you <clears throat> uh, you know uh, a sahajya but when you are indirectly knowing that how bad this material world is uh and it is neti neti only this makes us an impersonal so what is necessary both are necessary uh, the spiritual knowledge is also necessary the material knowledge is also equally necessary so that uh you know when you have the direct education you know comes by theory and in direct education it comes by experience so Uh, experience our experiences have to be connected with the spiritual knowledge for learning uh, uh to you know make this happen and then only we can uh, advance uh, you know spiritually also so like for example you know uh, my stomach is got bad okay maybe by chance uh, uh, you know i was lucky that tomorrow i'll be lucky so and if i overeat again then again you know so then you're learning so uh, uh, in this time you might not learn so much but then uh, the but then scriptures may give you know as uh, uh, other people's also realization 
and uh, devotees may give their realization also and help us make you know the connection but it is we who have to make that connection okay what did i learn from the life of hiranyakashipu what did i learn from the life of ravana what do i learn from the life of uh, queen kunti what do i learn from the life of the pandavas so these learnings have to be there and you know uh, krishna is saying that you know uh, 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 krishna is saying that uh, that this world is dukhalam ashashvatam but what uh, what do the others say like you know in the movies they say that you know okay and they lived happily uh, ha happily ever after but both are opposite scriptures are saying something and uh, you know the material knowledge is saying something so we need to reconcile these things and because of this only human life is the best opportunity you know for the culture of the spiritual knowledge and but a human being who does not you know take this then uh, he's the lowest of the mankind so let's see the next uh, paragraph what it has to say Sushil Prabhu, please read. Hare Krishna Madhari. Hare Krishna. From his kingdom, the personality of Godhead sends his bona fide servants to propagate this message by which one can return to Godhead and sometimes the Lord comes himself to do this work. Since all living beings are his beloved sons, his uh, God is more sorry then we ourselves to see the sufferings we are constantly undergoing in this material condition the miseries of this material world serve to indirectly remind us of our in incompatibility with dead matter intelligent living entities generally take note of these reminders and engage themselves in the culture of vidya or transcendental knowledge Human life is the best opportunity for culture of spiritual knowledge and a human being who does not take advantage of this opportunity is called an Aradhana, the lowest of human beings. Yeah. Please read, the, yeah, please read this paragraph. The sure. path of Abhidya or advancement of material knowledge for sense gratification is the path of repeated birth and death. As he exists spiritually, the living entity has no birth or death. Birth and death apply to the outward covering of the spirit soul, the body. Death is compared to the taking off and birth is to the putting on of outer garments. Foolish human beings who are grossly absorbed in the culture of Aveda, Nisans, do not mind the cruel process. Enamored with the duty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly and do not learn any lessons from the law of nature. Hare yeah. Krishna. So this is what I had explained previously also in the synopsis that uh, we, uh, we just uh, saw the overview of that. That uh, uh, nobody, you know, uh, these people, they do not take up to these path of this. So uh, if you see that uh, those who are, you know, uh, enjoying material sense gratification, they will be kept in this mortal world. And uh, keeping, how to keep a balance of the material world and, sorry, of the material activities and the spiritual activities, that is actually uh, the art. So when a person is in, uh, you know, allured with the illusionary energy and uh, they have to go through some miseries of repeated birth and death but and still they do not learn the lessons then they again have to go uh, you know into the repeated birth and death so uh, then these people do not go these people actually have an unrestricted sense enjoyment uh, and that leads to the path of ignorance and death and these material activities that are there, 
uh, they will not reduce their you know enjoying of these material activities so the activities of these material senses you know are uh, well, you can say uh, a perverted reflection of the activities of the original spiritual world so in the spiritual world also there is something going on in the material world. so in the spiritual world also you have lust here also you have lust in the spiritual world also you have love over here also you have love in the spiritual world also there is anger over here also you have anger in the spiritual world also there is ego here also you have ego but the ego of the spiritual world is the true ego and here is the false ego here the false ego is of me and mine and there the true ego is that i am the servant of the lord so if you see uh, the comparison of the spiritual world and the material world in the spiritual world all these lust greed anger pride envy ego it will take you more and more towards krishna but in the material world these lust ego pride and uh, you know this they will take you away from krishna that is the difference between these and here they are called anarthas anartha means unwanted we don't want these anarthas which are really not wanted jo unki zarurat hi nahi hai but in the spiritual world these things are really wanted to relish the past times to relish uh, the you know dealings between uh, the devotees and krishna like for example in the spiritual world uh, you know radharani also gets angry but her anger is a transcendental anger which uh, you know which actually very beautifully brings out that past time and we can relish that particular past time like uh, when a normal person gets angry we get scared but when radharani gets angry and we actually read that oh radharani got angry with krishna we relish that particular past time that oh now she has you know become angry with krishna now what will krishna do then krishna's role is that how he will pacify her anger how we, he will cool down her anger and he will try different different ways he will try uh, uh, and he will try many many ways to actually pacify her or yashoda mai's anger is there uh, brings her more to krishna like uh, yashoda mai when she got very angry with krishna she tried to bind krishna with the rope but that particular past time we are relishing normally uh, you know when somebody is tied up you know he himself is tied up and he himself is very happy that see my devotee has tied me up so when you are tied up you feel very angry but over here when the lord is tied up by his own mother he is relishing she is also relishing the other gopis are also relishing so this is a very transcendental thing where uh, these past times that are there these past times uh, are eternal past times and uh, uh, the more you hear uh, or these uh, spiritual activities the more you will hear you will be purified over year you hear anything about another great man you are not going to be purified you might at the most be inspired but you will not be purified but in the spiritual world whatever spiritual activities you are going to hear or you are going to repeat them to others you yourself will be purified so when you are uh, uh, when uh, when you are preaching you are uh, you know for your purification and glorification of the lord so first by glorifying the lord you are being purified so this is uh, what is been actually uh, said let's see the next paragraph Lakshmi Narayan Prabhu, please read. Yes, Pataji, Hare Krishna Dharita. Therefore, the culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge is essential for the human being. Sense enjoyment is the deceased material condition must be restricted as far as possible. Unrestricted sense enjoyment in this bodily condition is the path of ignorance and death. The living entities are not without spiritual senses. Every living being is in 
in his original spiritual form has all the senses which are now materially manifested being covered by the material body and mind the activities of the material senses are perverted reflections of the activities of the original spiritual senses in his deceased condition the spirit soul engages in material activities under the material covering real sense enjoyment is possible only when the disease of materialism is removed in our pure spiritual form free from all material contamination real enjoyment of senses is possible a patient must regain his health before he can truly enjoy sense pleasure again thus the aim of human life should not be to enjoy perverted sense enjoyment but to cure the material disease aggravation of the material disease is no sign of knowledge but a sign of avidya ignorance for good health a person should not increase his fever from 105 degrees to 107 degrees but should reduce his temperature to the normal 98.6 that should be the aim of human life the modern trend of material civilization is to increase the temperature of the feverish material condition which has reached the point of 107 degrees in the form of atomic energy meanwhile the foolish politicians are crying that at any moment the world may to may go to hell that is the result of advancement of material knowledge and the neglect of the most important part of life the culture of spiritual knowledge sri ishopanishad over the record sri ishopanishad herein warns that Is you must not follow this dangerous path leading to death on the contrary we must develop the culture of spiritual knowledge so that we may become completely free from the cruel hands of death thank you mataji hari krishna yeah thank you prabhu thank you so much so you are able to hear me yes mataji yes mataji yes 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 i just got freezed so some time i don't know okay so then uh, you know this particular analogy that has been given you know a patient must regain his health before he can you know truly enjoy sense pleasure again for a good health a person should not increase his fever from you know 105 to 107 but should reduce it so you know this 107 degree you know is like uh, you know like an you know atomic bomb and uh, you know uh, it will just bombard you it will just blast so now uh, this particular paragraph saying it does not mean that all the activities for maintenance of the body should be stopped oh you know this this is material activity i should stop it or this is material activity i should stop it no just as there is no question of wiping out you know the temperature all together but we are going to slowly and steadily try to recover from that temperature or from that particular disease so and that is why uh, you know it said the making the best use of the ba bad bargain so uh, how the body is a uh, bad bargain uh, so you know the body is a bad bargain means what a duration the intensity the variety of body that we have got and to how much extent can we actually stretch so this duration is like you know how much uh, the pain lasts longer or the intensity would be that uh, uh, the body is more you know uh, sensitized to give pain than to give pleasure so even like sometimes you know some people you know even one prick you know can uh, make all that pleasure that is experiencing uh, you know by all the other body parts it will you know disappear or like you know you when you take an injection then all the body parts you know that pain killer will uh, you know vanish all the other uh, pains of the body part or uh, there are different varieties of pains you know uh, which are uh, uh, so Uh, actually you know what i was trying to tell is that uh, the variety of pains can be many but of the variety of pleasure is limited and the extent would be that uh, the number of parts 
those who can give pleasure are less than the number of parts that can give pain so what are those parts that can give uh, you know pleasure is the eyes can give pleasure or the ears can give pleasure there are only five senses that can give pleasure but bodily parts we have so many right so with this particular body which is of a limited duration or it has you know limited intensity or there is no not much variety for pleasure or you know the extent is very what you say very limited so then you have to make the best use of this bare bargain and you know when uh, when this bodily this body is you know worstly used you make a worst use of this particular bad bargain then what will happen is that we will only be obsessed with artha and kama and there will be only spiritual degradation and uh, material devastation so this culture of spiritual knowledge is helping uh, the body and mind uh, you know it is it is facilitating basically and therefore this maintenance of uh, body and mind is required uh, if we want to reach the goal of our life so uh, you know krishna says that yukta uh, har yukta chetasya so uh, you know there is the second of aspect of uh, knowing this knee science and even great sages they have you know attempted to do this by you know balanced program we need to have a proper balance program and shila prabhupada has given this balance program to us how we will balance our material life so what are we doing to balance both the material life and the spiritual life morning we wake up you know by 3 34 and then till 9 o'clock we are doing our spiritual duties then throughout the day from 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock those 12 hours again we are doing material activities to maintain our body and body but again at 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock when we come back home we do some little small reading then again you know you are you know balancing okay 12 hours i was materially involved but then now it is 1 hour i should be spiritually involved this is how we can balance there are many other ways to balance but it is uh, you know case based so for example you are following some schedule in one part of the world i am following one schedule in this part of the world or in this particular country somebody is in another country he is following his schedule so he or she has to figure out what time do i want to wake up what time do i want to actually you know sleep and it primarily revolves around about you know wake up time and sleep time so <clears throat> if your sleep time is not proper then your wake up time will be distorted and then uh, you know there will be no consistency so spiritual life is all about being consistent uh, that is why it says now that uh, uh, spiritual life is unmotivated and uninterrupted it's not like that that uh, today i wake up at 4 o'clock and uh, tomorrow i wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning no there has to be some balance or today i wake up at 4 o'clock tomorrow i'll wake up at 6 o'clock day after tomorrow at 7 o'clock no it has to be consistent and for that if the sleep time is maintained properly then definitely everything will be taken care uh, of like and you know i have seen in my own personal life like when the sleep time is not proper and definitely every devotee has its you know up and down graph but the whole idea is you keep on endeavoring keep on endeavoring it's not like that that oh ye mere se hoga hi nahi you know it's impossible no you keep on endeavoring you rise you fall you rise you fall you rise you fall this is only spiritual life it's not like that that okay you know that whole graph will be in a straight you know going upwards 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 and it is going to go till the end no because uh, we are grihasthas there will be a uh, you know the up and fall in the graph but the whole idea is that you keep on endeavoring har roz aapko thodi thodi koshish karni hai ki आज मैं चलो मैं रोज अगर सिक्स ओ क्लॉक उठता हूँ या उठती हूँ तो मैं चलो आज फाइव थर्टी उठने की कोशिश करूंगा या मैं रोज अगर सेवन ओ क्लॉक उठता हूँ तो मैं कोशिश करूंगा कि मैं सिक्स थर्टी उठू फिर नेक्स्ट वीक मैं सिक्स ओ क्लॉक उठूंगा 
फिर नेक्स्ट वीक में फाइव थर्टी उठूंगा फिर नेक्स्ट वीक में फाइव ओ क्लॉक सो वैसे जस्ट लाइक वेन यू गो इन जिम यू नो यू यू नो योर जिम ट्रेनर ही डज नॉट से दैट ओके फर्स्ट डे ऑफ जिम नाउ यू नो स्टार्ट पिकिंग अप टेन के जीज यू नो यूल नेवर गो टू द जिम एट ऑल द नेक्स्ट डे यूल कोलेप्स यू नो यूल बी सो मच दिस दैट डीमोटिवेटेड दैट वॉट आई हैव टू पिक अप टेन के जी बट यू कम फर्स्ट डे इन द जिम एंड द जिम से आराम आराम से लेना आराम से लेना आज एक किलो तो वन किलो बहुत आसान लगेगा तो नेक्स्ट वीक यू कम देन यू विल से अच्छा दो किलो तो थर्ड वीक यू कम देन यू विल से थ्री के जी एंड दैट्स हाउ ही विल इंक्रीज योर बॉडीली स्ट्रेंथ सिमिलरली विथ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ ऑल्सो वेन यू वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज योर स्पिरिचुअल स्ट्रेंथ देन यू हैव टू गिव योर सेल्फ स्मॉल डोजेज यू डोंट हैव टू गिव वेरी बिग डोजेज दैट ओके आवेश में मैं आ गया हूँ आज आज मैं चौसठ माला करूंगा बट देन डेट चौसठ माला इज लाइक यू नो यू माइंड डू चौसठ माला टूडे सिक्सटी फोर राउंड यू माइंड डू टूडे बट टूमोरो यू माइंड लैंड अप नॉट डूइंग इवन अ सिंगल राउंड बिकॉज यू से ओके मैंने आज का कोटा कल ही कंप्लीट कर लिया था बट दी काउंटर आंसर फॉर दैट वुड बी दैट ओके आज का आपने कल ही खा लिया था क्या आप रोज का रोज ही खाते हो ना रोज थ्री टाइम्स खाते हो ऐसा नहीं कि सुबह को ही आपने पूरे दिन का खा लिया है इट्स नॉट दैट राइट सो सिमिलरली वेन यू गिव स्मॉल स्मॉल डोजेस एंड दी स्मॉल डोजेज यू हैव टू गिव टू योर माइंड दी स्मॉल डोजेज वी हैव टू गिव टू अवर माइंड सेइंग दैट ओके माइंड यू नो टुमोरो आई वुड लाइक टू चैंट फोर राउंड एक्स्ट्रा हाउ अबाउट दैट ओके ठीक है तो माइंड विल से ओके फोर राउंड यू नो नॉट मॉन्ट अ बिग डील ओनली हाफ एन आर इट टेक्स टू चैंट फोर राउंड देन यू टेल द माइंड ओके माइंड टूडे ना वी विल स्टार्ट रीडिंग विद वन पेज यू नो अ सेज बाय पेज यू नो सो ओके वन पेज ओके वन पेज इज नॉट बिग डील ओनली थ्री टू फोर मिनट्स इट विल टेक यू नो फॉर मी टू रीड थ्री ओके माइंड कैन वी रीड टूडे फॉर फिफ्टीन मिनट्स हाँ हाँ फिफ्टीन मिनट्स आई कैन रिमूव टाइम नो प्रॉब्लम सो लाइक दिस आर माइंड विल बी ट्रेन्ड यू कैन ईदर बी फ्रेंड योर माइंड और मेक द माइंड योर यू नो वर्स्ट एनिमी ईदर यू कैन मेक योर माइंड योर बेस्ट फ्रेंड और द वर्स्ट एनिमी एंड द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट टॉकिंग टू द माइंड एंड गिविंग गुड इंस्ट्रक्शन द माइंड इज ऑल्सो वॉन्टिंग गुड इंस्ट्रक्शन but the mind you know spaces out why because how will the mind space out i'll tell you so when we are not spiritually sound then the mind spaces out when every day you feed the mind with good instructions by reading the scriptures the mind will become your friend the mind will become your very good friend so when you are reading oh wow i read something very nice today Let me apply one or two points in this mind. What do you think? क्या करना चाहिए इसको apply करना चाहिए Mind will say, हाँ हाँ ये तो बहुत छोटी बात है कर सकते हैं हम लोग So this is how you make the mind your friend. You in you you make him involved in your activities. You talk to your mind. You you make him as a mind. You are my best friend. Mind, you are my such a nice friend. You know. And you know what is the duty of a nice friend mind? The duty of a nice friend is that it takes that friend from you know difficulties to a relaxed place. So this is how you train your mind slowly, slowly when you train your mind in such a way. So this is actually I'm talking to myself also. I also have to train my mind. It's not like that that we you only you all have to train your mind. For me also this applies. But right now I also when I am talking to you, I am training my own mind only. Okay. what more can i do for you know krishna what more can i do for you know uplifting myself in spiritual life because i am also in the same category that you all are into i am also sailing in the same material boat i am also having anarthas all these six anarthas even i have not got rid of but yes we are on that particular path we are trying to you know slowly slowly you know uh, get rid of those anarthas by reading scriptures by involving others into reading scriptures and uh, constantly training our mind that uh, please listen to the scriptures please listen to what prabhupada has to say please listen to what guru has to say so our mind is you know 
uh, you know so we have senses over here down then you have the mind above the mind is the intelligence so when you sharpen this intelligence then the mind will listen to you but if you don't you know sharpen only the intelligence then the mind will not take any instruction then the intelligence goes below the mind then the mind will dictate the intelligence and then it will dictate the senses also and then that's how you know people start doing wrong things so when the intelligence is lost and it becomes subordinate to the mind then there is anger then there is frustration then there is ego then there is lust then there is envy but when the mind is sound the mind is cool and calm it will not have any anger and that is why intelligence is required and intelligence required to sharpen and many times see my currently you know even my situation okay so uh, you know my mind is over here and intelligence is over here and that is why i am not able to see myself only but the spiritual master's intelligence is above the mind and that is why the spiritual master can tell you that what is our fault where are we going wrong it's exactly like a mirror you know the spiritual master is like a mirror the mirror can tell you okay there is a dot on your nose there's a black dot that is on your nose this is your defect and this is where we need to improve but sometimes when the intelligence is not sharpened and the intelligence is below the mind it is not ready to take those instructions also from the spiritual master or from the scriptures or from the representatives of the god or the others not only spiritual masters but shiksha gurus also and uh, other mentors also so that is why this whole bhakti shastri course we are actually organizing for this only that how to sharpen the intelligence so that the mind becomes the best friend so that we come out from knee science so that we come to our original constitutional position that we need to serve the lord because uh, they say that the soul is rebellious they don't say actually the mind is rebellious but inside the soul is also the mind is residing so the mind is very rebellious wo bahut baagi ho gaya hai jaise ek chhota bachcha hai aapka right to chhota bachcha hai na bahut he will throw a lot of tantrums i want this i want that i want this but what the mother does the mother is controlling why because the mother has that intelligence that this is not good for my child he is throwing tantrums uh, he is asking me which is not relevant which is going to harm him and he is asking me that so the intelligence acts like a mother all the time protecting the child all the time protecting the mind ki nahi nahi ye tere liye theek nahi hai ye tere liye sahi nahi hai tum galat disha mein ja rahe ho so make the intelligence your mother make the mind your friend and that's how we can actually transmigrate transgress you know these three modes of material nature the three modes of material nature are very heavy so इग्नोरेंस एंड पैशन से हमको मोड ऑफ गुडनेस में आना है वी हैव टू कम फ्रॉम दी दैट लोअर लेवल टू अ हायर लेवल एंड इवन मोर देन दी हायर लेवल शुद्ध सत्व लेवल वे आर कंटिन्यूसली यू आर थिंकिंग ओनली अबाउट दी बेनिफिट ऑफ कृष्णा और कंटिन्यूसली यू थिंकिंग ओनली अबाउट कृष्णा बेनिफिट लाइक यू नो वी वर डिस्कसिंग दी अदर डे डे बिफोर ये स्टडे वी वर डिस्कसिंग दैट in vrindavan everybody is thinking only to please krishna in vrindavan the bhav is that uh, i am my existence is only to please krishna i cannot think anything other than pleasing krishna mera astitva hi ye hai ki mujhe bhagwan ko prasanna karna hai and my actions will be all doubted towards pleasing krishna so yashoda mai is also you know churning the butter she is also doing her household duties as a grihastha but while doing household duties she is thinking about krishna's past time while churning the butter by cooking for him or in that matter even the other gopis who are cooking in their own houses 
they are also thinking that this particular preparation that I am making, I am making only for Krishna. Or this particular butter that I am making, I am making this only for Krishna. So that he should come in my house. In the inner core of their hearts, the gopis are thinking ki, I mere ghar aur chura ke le ye makhan, jo isi ke liye banaya hua hai. Let him come and take this butter. Let my life be purified. So they are also making butter. But, uh, you know, artificially or not even exactly the word is not artificial, you can say. But, you know, they are just exhibiting a false, uh, you know, anger that, oh, he has taken my butter or he has stolen my butter and uh, they are going to complain Mother Yashoda. And then Krishna is also, you know, enacting that Mother, I did not do that. You know, somebody else has done that. So, the, the Vrindavan consciousness is that, that I am pleasing only Krishna. And over here, the poverted reflection is that I am pleasing only my senses. I want to please only my senses. I don't want to please anybody else. I am only living for myself or I want to earn money to, you know, satisfy my senses. I want to earn money uh, to, you know, do more sense gratification. I want to earn money or I'm living uh, to just enjoy my life. You know, mujhe dusro ke enjoyment se koi matlab nahi hai. And this is, that is why we say that, you know, the spiritual world, the material world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. This is what, uh, is, these are some of my thoughts. Let's go to the next uh, paragraph. Mohana, you are there? Mohana? Indriyani Mataji, you are there? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please read, Mataji. This does not mean that all the activities for the maintenance of the body should be stopped. There is no question of stopping activities. Just as there is no question of wiping out one's temperature altogether when trying to recover from a disease, to make the best use of a bad bargain is the appropriate expression. The culture of spiritual knowledge necessity necessitates the help of the body and mind. Therefore, maintenance of the body and mind is required if we are to reach our goal. The normal temperature should be maintained at 98.6 degrees and the great sages and saints of India have attempted to do this by a balanced program of spiritual and material knowledge. They never allow the misuse of human intelligence for diseased sense gratification. Yeah. Thank you, Madhaji. Thank you so much. So then this particular, uh, you know, I was just trying to see how many more paragraphs we have. Okay. So now in this particular paragraph, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are saying that uh, the, you know, uh, how the great sages, you know, are uh, having a balanced program of knowledge. They're not misusing the human intelligence for, you know, disease sense gratification. So whenever a saint will preach to us, whenever a saint will, uh, uh, you know, give us any instructions, so it will actually always tell you that, okay, you know, material life, you know, uh, is not meant for sense gratification. Material life is not uh, not meant for living like cats and dogs. But, you know, this human form of body is being given for us to actually uh, understand our original constitutional position, our eternal relationship with the Lord. So uh, he's saying that, these activities of the maintenance of the body should not be stopped. Nobody, nobody will tell you that, okay, you please stop earning from today. Please stop maintaining your family today. No. The, the Supreme Lord has made this earth in such a way that while living in this earth, you can do spiritual activities. So, uh, because, uh, so it is exactly like, you know, it's saying in, in this paragraph, it's saying that you cannot wipe out the temperature altogether, right? You cannot say that, okay, I'll just wipe out the temperature altogether. Means I will just, you know, take up only to spirituality and, you know, just, uh, you know, stop earning 
stop maintaining my body uh, stop maintaining my family my wife my children my parents sab ko chhod chhad ke main you know chala jata hu kahi pe no he that is called wiping out the whole temperature but no uh, he saying that we have to make use uh, make the best use of this bad bargain you know so this particular uh, this culture it will help us to maintain our body and mind that is you know the spiritual culture will help us to maintain our body and mind and it will help us to reach to our proper goal that is to go back home back to godhead and please the supreme personality of godhead and that is why this particular balance program of maintaining the material body also and the spiritual soul also that is been you know given in this paragraph how to you know how will you maintain you need to maintain both the balance of both because uh, the body needs food to eat if you do not earn then how will uh, uh, you you know get something to eat or some basic necessities necessities of life that are you know food clothing and shelter for that also a person has to go out and earn so but the misuse of human intelligence is not allowed for sense gratification this is what the saints of uh, you know all times are actually trying to tell us or even the current saints are trying to tell us okay so let's see the next paragraph Rup Manohar Prabhu, please read this. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, human activities are digest uh, by the tendency towards sense gratification have been regulated in the Vedas under the principle of salvation. The system employs re religion, economic development, sense gratification and salvation. But at present moment, people have no interest in the religion or salvation. They they have only one aim in life, sense gratification. And in order to achieve this end, they make plans for economic development. Misguided men think that religion should be maintained uh, because it contributes to the economic development which is required for sense gratification. Thus, in order to guarantee further sense gratification after that, in heaven, there are many, there are some system of religious observance, but this is not purpose of religion. The path of religion is actually meant for self-realization and economic development is required to just maintain body in, in a sound, heavily condition, healthy condition. A man should lead a healthy life and with a sound mind, just to realize Vidya, the true knowledge, which is the aim of human life. This life is not meant for working like us and uh, or for cultivating Vidya for sense gratification. Yeah, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. So, uh, they, they are actually talking about, you know, uh, oh, Vidya. So, uh, now, you know, the in this particular paragraph is uh, talking about, you know, uh, incorrect use of this dharma, artha, kama, moksha to attain, uh, you know, immortality and uh, through paradharma to know no, uh, know Krishna personally. So, we should not live, uh, you know, this life for only dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So, uh, and this will only, you know, uh, uh, even there are many texts actually, I actually am trying to connect with Vyasa Deva because Vyasa Deva in the Srimad Bhagavatam, when he was very despondent, 
and uh, why he was despondent narad muni comes and tells him a guru his guru narad muni he comes and tells him that why are you not happy you are not happy because uh, you have not sufficiently glorified the devotional activities of krishna you have not sufficiently described about bhakti you have only described about dharma artha kama moksha and uh, it will only you know lead everybody to a brahma bhuta stage or a neutral stage right so uh, now you start writing about only pure devotional service to the lord and that's how you will get rid of your despondency means he was very sad despondency means dukhi tha itna sab kuch likhne ke bavajood hi he wrote the you know, vedanta sutras and he wrote the upanishads and he wrote the puranas and uh, he wrote uh, uh, so many other uh, texts also but then the, these vedas you know were insufficient textbooks and that is why he was not very happy so dharma artha kama moksha human activities are diseased by only a tendency towards sense gratification and they have only been regulated in the vedas uh, you know under the principles of salvation ki aapko moksha milega aapko ye milega aapko wo milega so this is called uh, you know uh, kaitava dharma kaitava dharma means what anything short of pure devotional knowledge can uh, satisfy neither krishna nor the soul so wherever there is no devotional knowledge then it will not satisfy anybody but where they were there there is pure devotional service or pure devotional knowledge then it will satisfy uh, the soul so uh, uh, and this is what this kaitav dharma is actually you know been condemned in these paragraphs mm -hmm. let's see the next so right now we saw many what is the part to uh, the uh, avidya path now they are saying that what is the you know path of vidya okay mohana mata ji please read this paragraph okay kalyani mata ji please read this paragraph uh the path of vidya is most perfectly presented in shrimad bhagavatam which directs the human being to utilize his life to inquire into the absolute truth the absolute truth is realized step by step as brahman parmatma and finally bhagwan the personality of godhead the absolute truth is realized by the broad minded man who has attained knowledge and detachment by following the 18 principles of bhagavad gita described in the purport of mantra 10 the central purpose of these 18 principles is the attainment of transcendental devotional service to the personality of godhead therefore all classes of men are encouraged to learn the art of devotional service to the lord yes yeah. and then you have this guaranteed path of the aim of vidya is described by rupa goswami in bhakti rasamrit sindhu which we have presented in the english as nectar of devotion and the culture of vidya is summarized in bhagavatam so this bhagavatam this shloka is very nice actually tasmat eke manasa bhagwan satatam pati shrotavya kiti tavyascha dheya puja se nityada therefore with one pointed attention tasmat ekena na manasa one pointed attention one should constantly hear about or uh, constantly hear about glorify shrotavya uh, first hear about shrotavya kirtitavya asya glorify cha dheya remember and pujasya cha nitya da and worship the personality of godhead 
हु इज दी प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ द डिवोटीज भगवान सातवताम पति सो सातवताम पति मीन्स He is the protector of his devotees. Satatam means those who are elevated devotees, and he is the pati. He is the protector. The husband's role is to protect the wife, right? So that is why he is saying pati. And unless religion, economic development, and sense gratification aim towards the attainment of devotion service to the Lord, they are all simply different forms of knee science, as Sri Ishopanishad indicates in the following mantras. so these uh, you know paragraphs uh, as i previously also told that you know it is all kaitava dharma if you are not you know preaching so at the present moment also people have no interest in religion or salvation they have only one aim in life sense gratification and in order to achieve this uh, you know end they make so many plans for economic development but you know misguided men they think that religion should be maintained because you know uh, it is contributing to economic development they you know means how i'll tell you they think that uh, for sense gratification we should actually you know follow religion like somebody thinks that if i go every day to the temple then uh, you know i will never have problems of money or if i go uh, if i if i follow particular religion then you know my my material life will be very you know smooth going i will never have any problems people come to the temple uh, many times to have their they have their big list uh, lord i want this 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 you know so the then they think that the lord is their order supplier <clears throat> so they have you know you know they have a very this uh, of uh, the very this knowledge of god they don't have so much knowledge about god that god is not my order supplier supplier like you know and these are only misguided men they think that religion should be maintained because uh, you know lord will supply me this lord will supply me that and uh, it will guarantee me further sense gratification after death and even in heaven uh, you know uh, i will be enjoying in the heaven also if i go to the heaven but this is not the purpose of religion this the the purpose of religion is actually meant for self realization and yes you know economic development is re required but you know how much to maintain the body in a sound healthy condition that much only it is required so uh, they say that okay you know uh, you know uh many people say that okay yoga is required yoga is not there's a debate uh, you know even within this that whether yoga is required or not required but i i say that yoga is required my views are that yoga is required every day a person should do at least 20 minutes half an hour 45 minutes or one hour yoga yoga actually keeps like for example somebody is debating on ki pranayam zaruri hai ya nahi you know that is for the body but this body if we understand that this body belongs to krishna and uh, i need to live a healthy life with a sound mind just to realize vidya you know which is the aim of human life so this life is not meant you know for working like asses you know for uh, you know cultivating a vidya for sense gratification i need a healthy life so that i can worship the supreme lord in the best conditions i need to do pranayam because when i am chanting i need to be focused on the holy name i need to do some asanas so that whenever i am sitting in one position for 2 hours my mind is only in that particular place and not hovering around the whole world up to you know usa or to australia not that way so the absolute truth is realized by the broad minded man who has a who has attained knowledge and detachment uh, when he is following the you know the principles of the bhagavad gita we have seen in uh, mantra 10 also that all what actually those you know principles that krishna is mention, mentioning you know, we are following and chila uh, rup goswami is saying that you know the, the guaranteed path you know is uh, you know to aim of vidya 
uh, in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. He's given so many other 64 principles he's giving uh, in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu that do's and don'ts. And uh, then how to cultivate this uh, Vidya we are seeing actually in Tasmat A.K. Manasa. So with one point of attention you have to cultivate uh, you know Vidya. So even see right now also, you all are sitting over here and attending this Ishopanishad class. So what are you all doing? You know, with one point of attention, you all are hearing. You all are hearing about whom? You all are hearing about Krishna. Then whatever you all have heard, maybe you all might just go and glorify. Tasmad Eges Manasa Bhagwan Swatatam Pati Shrotavya. You have heard. Kiritavya. You will go and glorify. You know, dhyanas, you will be you know, remembering the Lord. You will be worshipping the Lord. And this is how uh, you will be cultivating Vidya. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned that, uh, you know, analogy of, you know, the gym. So, what is every Saturday we are doing? We are actually strengthening our, uh, uh, you know, spiritual uh, strength. See, two hours to sit and hear is no jokes at all. No jokes. Means uh, nowadays the attention span of people is only half an hour. But here, you are sitting for two hours and continuously hearing, uh, uh, hearing, uh, uh, you know, an unexperienced person like me. And it is no jokes at all. So this is actually a step towards Krishna on every Saturdays you are taking that, yes, I want to, you know, hear about Krishna. I want to glorify about Krishna. I want to remember Krishna. I want to worship Krishna. And this is how you are taking some steps towards cultivating this knowledge. And, uh, you know, this is only the glory of bhakti. That, uh, uh, you know, you want to uh, use your material senses for spiritual purpose. Material senses means that we have hai, right? You have ears, that is your material senses. You have your eyes, uh, you have your nose, you have your mouth. So all these material senses that are there, I'm making the best use of the bad bargain by glorifying Krishna. You all are hearing about Krishna. You all will also go and glorify Krishna to your friends or to your relatives or to your, you know, uh, your family members. So, uh, you know, uh, and bhakti means only this, that we are using our senses for spiritual purpose, uh, you know, uh, naturally and it is very liberating. But opposite to that karma is, you know, you are abusing those senses for material purpose. And it is binding us. And even for the jnanis also, what they are doing, jnanis are rejecting the material senses for either for material or spiritual purpose. So, but though it is not binding for them, but it is unnatural. How can I stop hearing? How can I stop using my senses? So, these are three things where, you know, the glory of bhakti actually stands uh, as the king when you're ut utilizing your material senses for spiritual purpose, which is your natural swabhava, which is your natural, you know, pos uh, original constitutional position that uh, you know, I'm a spiritual person and I want to use my, you know, senses for spirituality. And this is going to liberate us from the cycle of birth and death. So, unless, uh, you know, religion, economic development, sense gratification are aiming towards attain, attaining the devotional service to the Lord, they are only simply different forms of knee science. You know, it, it is only, you know, it is going to only bind us. But if you're using this, then it will not bind us. It will liberate us. So that is what, what I feel that Upanishad is not really, you know, uh, uh, for us. Uh, and that is what Prabhupada is emphasizing again and again. This is the preliminary knowledge for a long, gradual process. You know, Artha, Dharma, Kama. And, you know, go to work on time, get money, you know, you know, get whatever you want. But of course, it's not good to hear of this, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, shore up our foundations that, okay, uh, if we have, uh, you know, some, this, 
uh, I will get it or if I have some this or, uh, you know, Kirtan, DT worship, you know, worshipping the Supreme Lord. So, only a person or only a devotee uh, an, or an ecstatic devotee, you know, has the taste uh, to necessary to do work and uh, just, uh, you know, fulfill his basic uh, necessities of life and then, uh, you know, move towards devotional life. So, uh, this relative position of the material life, uh, you know, and spiritual life is there. Then these stringent laws are there which a person has to surpass. Then there is real immortality. Real immortality means going back home, back to Godhead. And uh, the saints have come, you know, to give us that particular knowledge. And uh, whatever miseries that we have in the uh, material world, they are actually reminding us of our original identity in the spiritual world. And uh, uh, when you are culturing uh, Vidya, then uh, you know that, okay, what is my real sense gratification? And it is to please the Supreme Lord. And uh, these Vedic principles that have been laid down by Krishna in the Mantra 10, they are actually principles for salvation, to get out of this cycle of birth and death. So, uh, avidya, uh, when you say there are two parts actually over here, okay. Avidya, advancement of knowledge for sense gratification, it will only increase the fever of material disease. Whereas the vidya, that is the culture of uh, transcendental knowledge, uh, it will place us even beyond death. And this bodily activities, uh, it will re uh, reduce it. And uh, while you know you're doing economic and other material arrangements, uh, it will help you to balance also uh, against your spiritual endeavors, whatever you are doing. So, uh, the solution is that constant hearing and worshipping of the Supreme Lord is the topmost culture of Vidya. Constantly hearing and worshipping. Worshipping means what? Worshipping means what? When we are abiding by the instructions of the spiritual master, we are worshipping the Supreme Lord. Like in the Bhagavad Gita. Those 18 principles are given. Okay. How many am I to follow? Okay. I will start with principle number one. I will start following this. Okay. Then I am worshipping the Supreme Lord. Okay. Uh, principle number two. Okay. I am starting following. Then I am worshipping the Supreme Lord. So, the more you hear, the more you feel like worshipping. The more you hear, you feel like following the principles. The more you hear, you go more closer to Krishna. The more you hear, uh, the more you sharpen your intelligence and then you're instructing your mind, you're making your mind your friend. The more you're hearing, your love for Krishna will develop. So it all comes from, it all drills down to actually hearing. So I actually rest my speech over here. And if there are any queries, comments, reflections, uh, you are free to ask. Oh, so nobody has any queries, questions? Hare Krishna Mataji. Actually, I have one small question. Yes, uh, uh, that means I have heard that lust is not present in spiritual world. It is perverted reflection here and it is in the form of love in the spiritual world. So, but you said lust is there. So I did not get that point and found it contradictory. So can you please clarify? Maybe I have misunderstood. Sure, sure, sure. Kalyani Maharaj. So lust over here is binding us more and more. So lust is not only when you say lust, lust is not only about physical, you know, having uh, sexual relations. Lust is about, you know, even acquiring many, many things. So for example, a person may be lusty for acquiring many, many vehicles. I have one motorcycle. I want another 10 more. Every new model comes, I want that model. Or somebody might be lusty for, 
you know acquiring some uh, you know um, houses or properties i have one property another property another property see one is uh, then you might is, uh, you know you might say that mata ji it's a bit contradicting for me uh, that uh, you know i have made so much investments on land and you know in shares and uh, all these things then uh, uh you know what should i do i should sell my land because i am living in one house over here or i have another three four more houses as my property and you know for my uh, you know future i have actually saved that that in case of any calamity i can at least rely on that so uh to balance this out uh, the whole thing is that that uh, becoming overly greedy for something then that is called mm. lust if you are investing in shares and you forget okay i have invested on in some a grade shares and i just forget you know investment i don't see every day that whether market uh, is growing up and down my heart beats also go up and down when the market goes up and down and my whole focus is only on share bazaar then 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 that is uh, you know not uh, you know accepted because that is gambling that comes under gambling every day seeing your share bazaar ki acha kaun sa bhav kya hai so that also comes actually under lust that every day you want to accumulate money 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 or somebody has uh, you know lust of uh, you know fame that people should know me people should you know worship me people should you know take my photographs and you know they should put big big posters that is also lust lust of name and fame puja labh pratishta shukrer vishta we say right it is as equal as a hog's stool shukre shukar yani means uh, uh, sewer or hog so that is also lust but now this lust of this material world okay but the lust of the spiritual world is they are greedy to please krishna they are greedy to see krishna they are uh, uh, greedy to serve krishna they are lusty their eyes are you know just wanting to see krishna daily the gopis want to see krishna daily they uh, and they are cursing brahma that why did you make these eyelids also i don't want to uh, drift away from krishna sight even for a nanosecond so the lust over there is you know taking you more towards krishna it is it is making your and krishna's relationship more relishable but over here the lust is degrading just as see in the spiritual world also you have time and here also we have time over here time degrades everything but in the spiritual world time time is Uh, there is uh, time is upgrading everything over there every moment everybody is thinking how will i please krishna how will i please krishna uh, they are they are uh, because over there no in the spiritual world there is no past tense and there is no future tense there is only present tense and that is why everybody is happy over there because people don't think over there nobody thinks about their past and over there nobody thinks about their future also they are only thinking about the present tense over there so and that is why they are more happy over here also see no currently you are sitting over here you are happy right the moment you start thinking about your past ki mere sath aise hua tha waise hua tha ya you have bhai about the future then again you are not happy so uh, that is why this in the spiritual world the lust that will be there that will take you more and more closer towards krishna anything that is there which you think is a perverted reflection in the spiritual world will take you more and more closer towards krishna okay kalyani mata ji does that satisfy your query yes my teacher thank you yeah anybody else has any query okay so i think everybody understood everything so then i will ask you something main aapko prashn karungi abhi you know when i was in delhi we had his grace jita mitra prabhu so if somebody used to not ask him any question then say, okay agar aapke paas koi prashn nahi to mere paas prashn hai from the text that he has taught 
so he will ask you know short short questions and whether people have understood or not he'll so let's do a revision mai puchti hu from the you know paragraphs okay so hmm let's see let me just see the paragraphs so what are they saying okay who can uh, transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy immortally immortality a pure bhakta okay but more specifically who is in the progress by ignoring the science and going into the spiritual progress yes one who can learn the process of ni science and uh, that of transcendental knowledge side by side then he can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy life of immortality okay mother ji um, to be more specific in the last mantra it says dheera naam ha uh, sober so who, the one who is dheera can attain the yes 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 absolutely so why no one can avoid the hands of death gudi asasatam uh, asasatam is temporary everything is temporary in this material world okay but more specific answer because we are under the under sense gratification avidya okay more specific answer you are closer you are under something else also what are we under influence of material Maya. nature ah Maya. influence of material nature because the laws of material nature are so stringent and uh, you know cruel that uh, no one has been able to avoid the hands of death so the law of nature does not allow anyone you know anyone uh, you know to escape from birth death old age and diseases okay so then the question might arise that uh, what are the arrangements made by the law to reclaim the fallen souls what has the lord given us scriptures correct scriptures and he personally came and also sent his representative okay and he sends his representative yes, yes. so he has given us scriptures he also is sending his bona fide servants and also sometimes he himself comes uh, you know uh, to reclaim the fallen condition souls okay so then uh, what is the purpose of the miseries of this material world why are these miseries imposed upon us our past karmas and also no i had said something it is you know it is what it is you know in connection with it is all every time it is there to so that we can go back uh, back to home yes yes you are closer prabhu you are absolutely very closer to the answer so that we can remember the lord we can remember the lord a little more closer uh, if we would have been happy here then we would have never i mean we would have never remembered god or we would have never thought of going back home back to godhead yes okay little more closer i see whenever these questions are asked we need specific answers you all are you know coming very closer but this miseries of this material world is to serve uh material world to means you know the miseries of this material world they are serving us to indirectly remind remind us of our incompatibility with dead matter dead matter ke sath hum log compatible nahi hai to hum log kiske sath compatible hai fir then then that is why intelligent living being generally you know uh, you know are more cautious of these reminders and then they engage themselves in the you know uh, uh 
in uh, the transcendental knowledge the culture of vidya so every time this material world is actually reminding us that i am not compatible with this dead matter main iske sath compatible nahi hu to mujhe ab kiske sath compatible rehna hai fir okay okay then matlab what are these reminders uh, uh, how these reminders can you say हाँ रिमाइंडर्स ये मेरे दांत गिर रहा है okay. मेरे बाल झड़ रहे हैं मेरे बाल सफेद हो रहे हैं ठीक है ना so uh, या is, uh... उड़ा हो रहा हूँ रिमाइंडर्स ऑफ द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड राइट बिकॉज आई आई स्पेसिफिकली रिमेम्बर वेन द फर्स्ट वाइट हेयर दैट आई हैड यू नो ऑलमोस्ट फाइव इयर्स बैक वेन आई टर्न फोर्टी तो मुझे इतनी हलबली होगी दो यू नो आई एम इन डिवोशनल सर्विस I am a devotee from past so many years. एकदम हलचल हो गई But then again, when you started reading Bhagavad Gita and all, वाले like, okay ठीक है This is now you know this is a pro you know this is progression. ये trans migration होने ही वाला है You have to you know come to that reality. It did take me some time to come to this you know crude reality. It took me three four months to come to this reality. और कितना भी आप artificially कर लो आप कलर लगा लो आप कुछ भी कर लो वो जो दिखने वाला है वो झुरिया तो दिखने ही वाली है यू यू कैन एंड ऑल्सो लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल नाउ यू सी ऑल दीज बिग बिग मूवी डायरेक्टर्स एंड यू नो एक्टर्स एंड ऑल कितना भी बोटॉक्स लगा लेंगे बट अल्टीमेटली हाउ लॉन्ग कैन यू हैव बोटॉक्स बोटॉक्स ऑल्सो हैज इज ओन यू नो साइड इफेक्ट ओके बोटॉक्स लास्ट ओनली फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स एवरी थिंग इज टेम्पररी इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड botox for 6 months and for the first one month when you have that botox injection on your cheeks and on your face you can't even smile you know when you smile it pains for one month <laughs> so so these are some of the reminders prabhu okay okay next question um who is called a naradha ma the lowest of mankind or human being the one who this uh, who doesn't who believe god does take advantage of who does not take advantage of this opportunity yeah. that human life human, human yes life, yeah. he is a narada ma uh -huh. very good, very nice then what is the path of repeated birth and death which path we saw two paths which path is the path of repeated birth and death एग्जाम्पल न्यू गार्मेंट बाहर निकालो एंड यू नो द फुलिश ह्यूमन बींग इज ऑलवेज थिंकिंग अबाउट द एक्सटर्नल अविद्या ओके सो नेक्स्ट लेट्स सी दिस नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ सो इन ऑर्डर to hmm so can the advancement of material knowledge solve the problems of birth death old age and disease and what it can actually do no okay it cannot solve right but then what can it actually do what can the problems of birth old age and de uh, disease do it find us more yeah it will only accelerate the process of death by you know discovering uh, the nuclear bombs or you know 
and material knowledge cannot help anyone to protect from you know the cruel hands of old age disease or death because it cannot influence the laws of nature like how we saw the example of hiranyakashipu right okay i think uh, this revision was uh, good enough and uh, maybe we should continue with this revision because uh, today the 11th uh, mantra was a very elaborate mantra we might have a couple of more elaborate mantras like this and i am going a bit slow actually by now uh, we should be on 3/4 of the portion but we are only half of the portion and why am i going slow i'm going in a little deeper details also mm -hmm. thoda detail mein main ja rahi hu whereas actually uh, when i learned bhakti shastri we finished this in only 2 weeks because of course i, I did a full time bhakti shastri course morning evening morning evening right so in 2 weeks they had finished but in 2 weeks how much can i grasp and how much can i even ponder over or uh, think it about okay acha maine mantra mantra 11 learn kiya hai अब मैं अपने लाइफ में इसको कैसे अप्लाई करूंगी आई डेंट हैव टाइम फॉर दैट बट ओवर यर वी हैव वन फुल वीक फॉर मंत्रा यू नो इलेवन दैट हाउ विल आई अप्लाई मंत्रा इलेवन इन माई लाइफ सो आई थिंक द बेस्ट पार्ट अबाउट यू नो हैविंग अ स्लो एंड यू नो स्लो कोर्स इज दिस ओनली दैट वी गेट सफिशियंट इनफ टाइम टू एक्चुअली थिंक अबाउट दैट हाउ विल आई अप्लाई दी स्क्रिप्चर्स इन माई ओन पर्सनल लाइफ what steps will i take to apply this even as a teacher even i am also actually when i'm preparing for me also it is a like a double revision that okay me shayad ye bhool gayi thi i should start applying this again it is for me also reminder again that acha ye to main kar rahi thi lekin main ye bhool gayi hu let me start applying it again in my life okay so these are uh, every time scriptures are giving you reminder yes joy mata ji you had some question Yes, Mataji. Based on what you just discussed with us, we are listening to you actively, and you know, we, at least for me, I can say I'm understanding the gist of what you're saying. However, when you just ask questions just now, it got me to rethink all that you'd spoken in the class. But I'm wondering, at the time of the exam, how will we remember so much? Don't worry. There are only ten questions coming from this class. <laughs> तो आपके हैंडबुक में जितने क्वेश्चंस दिए हैं ना उसके बाहर से कुछ भी नहीं आने वाला है एंड यू स्टिल बी डूइंग अ रिवीजन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चंस कि फॉर एग्जांपल कि किसी की अंडरस्टैंडिंग अगर मान लो वो सेम अंडरस्टैंडिंग नहीं है जो क्वेश्चन पूछा गया है तो देन वील हैव अ राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इट वील बी डूइंग अ रिविजन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन आंसर ऑल्सो माता जी वॉट इज द इंटेंट ऑफ दू गेट द a uh, spirit of the what is written or to get the verbatim uh, answers which are there in the book uh, no there are no verbatim answers generally i give verbatim answers i am a maggu <laughs> i have all my life mugged up you know things and i have given answers and that's how when you mug up and you you know answer then you come first in your class always but uh, the whole spirit is that you can put it in your own words also we don't need verbatims at all you can put it in your own words also like there are many devotees who write in their own words but with me you know uh, my conditioning is such that i have been a maggu all my life so i have always mugged up answers and i have you know given and uh, because i used to always think that because i have been like a perfectionist all my life sab kuch perfect chahiye sab kuch perfect chahiye so then even when answers were written then mujhe sab perfect hi chahiye tha means even for me it was like that ki and and the bhi idhar se udhar shift nahi hona chahiye that level ka you know maggu i am like you know so but you all can actually you know have your own verbatims the gist will be you know jo jo main jo pucha gaya hai wo exactly aap aapne likhna hai ki what is what are they asking and you can put it in your own words also no problem right thank you mata ji this is very helpful so you know what uh, i have not done my homework and i i i beg forgiveness from everybody that i did not do my homework for mantra 9 and 10 i did not send those questions and i sent that recording also very late 
but i was pretty busy with some you know important services over here and i'll try to send even the homework for 9 10 and 11 for you all and you all can you know maybe yeah so if somebody i'm giving this homework and if somebody has a challenge ki mujhe ye question ka answer nahi pata hai please help me with that i will give the answers to that question बट थोड़ा पहले आप प्रयास कीजिएगा एंड देन आई विल गिव द एग्जैक्ट आंसर टू दैट पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन बिकॉज अभी तक मैंने बहुत सारे क्वेश्चंस भेजे हैं एंड आपको लगा कि ओ फॉर इट यू नो इसके आंसर्स मुझे किसी जन्म में नहीं पता चलने वाले हैं डोंट बी डिस्करेज इफ यू डू नॉट नो दंसर्स टू एनी ऑफ दोज क्वेश्चन यू ऑल कैन पुट मी अ पर्सनल रिक्वेस्ट दैट फॉर मंत्रा सो एंड सो Uh, question so and so i do not know the answer please give me the answer for that and i'll give you the answer for that okay and these extra questions jo main de rahi hu ye exam mein nahi aane wale hai ye sirf aap logo ke dimag ko thoda activate rakhne ke liye ya stimulate rakh stimulated rakhne ke liye hai okay so nothing of this is going to come in the examinations whatever is there in your handbook those questions only will come so but because juhi mata ji had uh, you know requested ki we want some food for hot so i am giving these and these are not compulsory also it is completely uh, you know optional you all want to actually answer them and write it them in but this will deepen your understanding more kyunki ye jitne bhi questions hai ye again popat mein se hi liye gaye bahar se kuch bhi nahi liya gaya hai okay Yeah. Any more uh, uh, questions?